Look, we all know that a chocolate bar is fabulous in and of itself. Melt in the mouth, luscious, mood enhancing. So if you're going to cook with chocolate, you have to be sure you're going to make something really special. And I am sure. The thing about cooking with chocolate, well, it's two things. One, it's very easy and you can make lots of different things. And two, everyone will thank you for it. And my chocolate banquet is really something to behold. Whether it's an old fashioned cake coated in thick chocolatey frosting, an unbelievably delicious chocolate cheesecake with a crisp base and smooth creamy topping, chocolate caramel crispy cakes, little morsels of heaven, or triple chocolate brownies that manage simultaneously to be chewy and melting. And just before bed, it has to be a rum and cinnamon hot chocolate, the perfect late night treat. My old fashioned chocolate cake is one of my family's favorites. Oh, it is so luscious. And the fact that this is scarcely any harder than a cake mix cake to make, makes it a joy. Now, the one thing I would advise, bit of organization, not normally my strong point, but because there are a lot of ingredients that you're just plonking into the processor, get them out first. Start off with a cup and a half, it's about 200 grams of plain all-purpose flour and a cup of sugar, it's 200 grams one teaspoon of baking powder half a teaspoon of bicarb, baking soda and two teaspoons of really good vanilla About two thirds of a cup, 150 mils, my small tub, of sour cream. And this for me is the magic ingredient here. And about a stick and a half, 175 grams of good unsalted butter, but this must be soft. You want it to blend easily. And a third of a cup of gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cocoa. And, finalmente, two eggs. Everything goes in the processor. I blitz to mix, pour into two waiting tins, 20 centimeter, eight inches, and then I'm gonna transfer them to a 350 Fahrenheit, 180 centigrade oven for, give or take, half an hour. And then the cakes are baked. about 175 grams at six ounces of semi-sweet really good dark chocolate in here melted with 75 grams or three quarters of a stick of butter and this fudgy goo is the basis of the frosting for these cakes to the butter and chocolate I need to add a bit of corn syrup or golden syrup about a, a tablespoon this will ensure the frosting shines spoonful teaspoon of vanilla again and half a cup about 125 mils of sour cream now just mix them all together <laughs> could eat this as it is last component some icing sugar some powdered sugar about two and a half cups 300 grams 
You could sieve straight into this bowl and you'd have your frosting there. I, however, can't. It's just one of those jobs I can't endure. So put it in the processor and mix. Every lump miraculously removed. And now the one goes into the cover. I have to say my children so love this cake. I use it to bribe them to do their homework. And mix again. Let's have a quick look. Oh, dreamy. And actually the perfect texture. I can smooth it easily over the cakes and yet it will set. Now, artistic endeavour can begin. Okay. Now, you may not think there's enough frosting here to fill and ice the entire cake, but there is. Have faith. Start off with using about a third on top of one of the cakes and spread well. I tend to stay clear of about the outside half inch or centimetre of the cake because when you put the top one on, it will sort of squelch down and the filling will spread to the edges. Speaking of which, lovely. Now another third or so on top. I call it an old fashioned chocolate cake and I like it to have an old fashioned look. So I just keep it swirly and slightly uneven. So I think it's what's called making a virtue out of necessity. And now I think I need a slightly bigger palette knife for this to go round the sides. And, you know, old-fashioned chocolate cake needs an old-fashioned adornment. Sugar flowers to be dotted around the cake just before the frosting dries. This is so lovely. I can't think of any more welcoming sight in the kitchen than this. I'm really happy if I get a good supply of chocolate in the house. I've got some milk there. I definitely want some semi-sweet too. Probably the most useful chocolate for cooking with. Oh, and I have to have little chips or morsels. The thing about these, you can scatter them into any mixture when you're baking and you've got lovely melting nuggets of chocolate later. Mm -hmm. The more the merrier. You know, you can never have too much chocolate, and I've got the basics, but who wants to stop there? What I really want is some deeply gorgeous, bittersweet chocolate. Oh, and I tell you as well, I have a real thing about the combination of salt and sweet, so I've got to take this, mm, yum, 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 chocolate with salt in it. Oh, and this looks nice. I call this the pioneering spirit. Chocolate and cheesecake are the two things absolutely vying for the top spot in the dessert hall of fame. And out of the kindness of my heart, obviously, I'm fusing the two here to make my chocolate cheesecake. And the first part is the base. And for that, I need about a cup and a third of graham cracker crumbs. That's about 125 grams of digestive biscuits. And these need to be thwacked into submission. Right, that's more or less done it. I'm just going to give a quick roll. And in they go for a quick whir, just to make sure there are no larger crumbs remaining. That's all I need. Now the chocolate cheesecake has to have a chocolate base. I'm getting that with cocoa. Put a tablespoon in with the crumbs and a little whir again, just so that the cocoa is evenly distributed in the crummage. It's a very impressive suntan there. The third and final ingredient for the base is butter. 
about half a stick, 50 or 60 grams. And now a little bit of whirring just to make everything adhere. We just need the crumbs to start looking like slightly damp, clumping sand. There we are, the beach after a rainy day. Really wonderful damp crumbs into the cake tin and just use your knuckles to form the base. I find a bit of pressing with hands is the best because the heat from your hands helps the butter kind of melt more and cohere. There we are. I'm just going to stash this in the freezer for a few minutes. It's just to chill it while we get on with the second part of the cheesecake, the luscious chocolatey custardy interior. To make a cheesecake, you need cheese, cream cheese. I need about two and a half packets, about 500 grams. And the cream cheese really must be at room temperature, otherwise you'll never get that desirable satiny smoothness. Just going to give this a bit of a going over. Right, sugar. I need about three quarters of a cup, about 150 grams. Super fine sugar, caster sugar. And it goes. And then some custard powder, tablespoon. Look at that, I love its peachy pink whiteness. And if you haven't got this, I would use about a tablespoon of cornstarch with another teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. Some eggs, three whole eggs, in they go. And three yolks, in you go my babies. To intensify the tang of the cream cheese, some sour cream, about two thirds of a cup, 150 millilitres. And I've got two ways of making this cheesecake chocolatey and the first way is by adding a bit of cocoa. There's only a teaspoon here and I've dissolved it in a tablespoon of hot water from a kettle. Chocks away. A little scrape down. Now this is quite a runny mixture, but it's that runniness which means you get the glorious, light, smooth texture when the cheesecake bakes. So now, just what we've been waiting for, a huge pool of melted bittersweet chocolate. I've got about 175 grams here, six ounces, and although it's melted, I have let it stand a bit so it's not hot, hot. And the chocolate just needs to be folded into the cheesecake mix. Patiently, dreamily. Now at first you can see it flecked and rippled, but sooner or later everything gives way to chocolate, which is after all the natural order of things. That's all that needs to be done, so time to fill the cheesecake base. First, I wrap with cling. That's so no liquid can get in or out because I'm baking this in a water bath. And on top of the cling, as a safety measure, foil. Just bring it right up. The tin goes into a roasting tray. Now I'm going to pour my gorgeous brown batter into the crumb lined tin. Mmm. Ah, deep, deep pleasure. Deep, deep pleasure. And last stage, to make the water bath, I'm going to pour a kettle of recently boiled water into the roasting tin so that it comes about halfway up the cheesecake tin. And don't be alarmed if the cheesecake tin bobs about a little. It's the cling that gives it buoyancy. 
and this goes into a 350 degree oven that's about 180 centigrade for 45 minutes to an hour thereabouts and you can tell it's ready when it's just set I mean it will be set properly at the sides but the center should have just a, a hint of wobble about it Now I'm just going to unclip the cool cheesecake, gently does it, ah that is so perfect, you can see by this paler colour here that the interior is every bit as satiny textured as I wanted. Now for the difficult work, at least for me, I'm going to try and convey this cheesecake to its plate. Luckily I have the tool for this job. Now I did advertise a tripartite cheesecake, did I not? And here is the third and final part, its crowning glory. Some melted chocolate, that's about three quarters of a bar. A bittersweet chocolate, which I am going to Jackson Pollock over the waiting cheesecake. Mm. A thing of beauty is a joy forever, I'm told. A joy for tea time does me. you how much I love brownies. There's just something about them. Chewy, fudgy, melting bellied. And this, the basis of my triple chocolate brownies, well it just has to be three times as good, if you can imagine that. And I have here just melted about 12 ounces of bittersweet chocolate. That's about 350 grams of deep, dark chocolate. And well, I'd say just over three sticks of butter about 375 grams. And uh, now I understand you won't be coming to me for diet tips. I'm gonna take this off the heat now so that when I add the eggs, we don't end up with just chocolatey scrambled eggs. It's a nice thought though. It's better to whisk after each one, just to be on the safe side. Up first, whisk. Second. Patience is not one of my virtues. Let's just put all four in and stir like crazy. It'll be fine, I promise you. Now a bit of vanilla, about a tablespoon. I mean, don't get too hung up on measuring this exactly. And a teaspoon of salt, just to give all this sweetness a bit of edge and about one and three quarter cups of sugar. That's about 350 grams. It goes. Now for flour, just regular all-purpose flour, just over one and a half cups about 225 grams. Well, you can see how quick all this is. I'm gonna try and be a bit patient, uncharacteristically so, as I stir the flour in so that the white powder just sinks into the dark batter. And now for the remaining duo of chocolates, we've had the bittersweet, the dark, dark chocolate, about 100 grams of milk chocolate, semi-sweet morsels, and the same amount of white chocolate. This will give kind of whole explosions in the mouth of buttery vanilla. I love it that when you stir, you start seeing little bits of white oozing into the depths. 
that's a two-handed job for me, I'm afraid. There we are, look, all that gorgeous brown batter. Just coax the batter gently, doesn't need too much persuasion, into the corners of the pan. And I've preheated the oven to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 180 centigrade, and I'd say give this about 25 minutes, but it so depends on your oven. You can tell when the browners are ready because the surface is a kind of lighter speckled brown, but underneath is deep, dark, gooey, just waiting to be bitten into. Sixteen. Seventeen and, well, no one's going to miss one, are they? person might think there was nothing more to be done with chocolate but that person would be wrong there is my chocolate crispy cakes when I was young a child really we used to make them with chocolate and golden syrup but I've evolved the recipe for my children and now I use a Mars bar so it shows there is such a thing as progress I use about four of the smallish ones about 50 grams two ounces along with some butter again about two ounces or 50 grams and what you get is this tremendously good goo. It's a kind of chocolate stickiness ribbon through with caramel and still having the kind of chewiness of nougat. Oof, can't really be improved. So while this is melting, and be patient, it does take some time, I'm going to line these mini muffin tins with paper cases so that I can clump spoonfuls of the crispy chocolate cakes and then put them in the fridge and the muffin papers will keep them from sticking. Perfect for any children's party. And the cornflakes. Now you could measure these and you'd need about 70 grams. It's easier to use cups. I need two and a half. Ooh. Now, I have to say, I just want to turn this into one big patty for myself, but I'm going to share such is the selflessness of a mother. And decant these to these mini muffin trays. You don't need to get a mini muffin tray. You could just buy the papers. It's just easier for me to take them to the fridge later. These just need to go into the fridge. An hour's good, 20 minutes is just fine. Mind you, if you can wait that long, I'm not sure I can. Oh Welcome to Chocolate Heaven, everyone. Okay, plate even up. Come on. Good. Mm, I'm having cheesecake with you, Bri. And now you thought it was over. Look what I got for you. Ooh. We're on a pressing mission to the chocolate stash. And I have to say, I have shown incredible restraint. I could have this whole larder, just shelf to shelf chocolate. As it is, look at the discipline, just this part what are the necessities. It's hard to say exactly how to minimise the chocolate stash, but this is how I do it. I absolutely have to have this, which started off life as a five pound bag of chocolate chips, really delicious ones. I think it's really important to have good cocoa. Look at this. Mm. 
I'm going to have to buy some more. Beautiful. Lovely milk chocolate. I think that's incredibly important. Look at this. It's like chocolate bullion. And I, it's not always my choice, but I have to have good white chocolate. My children insist on it. And I want to show you. You can see this is good because you can actually see the vanilla speckles there. And right now, well, what I have to have is some gorgeous dark, dark chocolate. There are a few things as comforting after a long day and just before you go to bed than a vast cupful of soothing hot chocolate. This one starts off innocently enough with milk, about a cupful, and do not even think about using anything less than full fat, please. And if you do, I don't want to know about it. On top of that, cinnamon stick. An ooze of golden honey. And some soft light brown sugar. Mm. It's like putting your hands in the sand at the beach. A drop of vanilla. And I think I'm going to turn this on so it can start heating up now, just so that the chocolate melts into that milk. I want about half this large bar and to be frank, just snap it into the milk. And the wonderful thing about using proper chocolate is that not only does it give you this fabulous intense flavor, but also it slightly thickens the milk. So what you end up with is, I suppose, like a, a drinkable sauce just because this is my nightcap. A splosh of rum. And you know, I think I must have been a sailor in a previous life because I just love rum. I'm gonna whisk it all to help the chocolate melt into the milk. And I shall lift out my cinnamon stick in this rather unwieldy fashion and pour. Mm. Oh, I love the way the hot chocolate rises up like steam. Mmm, sweet dreams. Mmm.